In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the on media social sharing location in Monarch. The on media location automatically adds social sharing buttons to images within your posts on mouse hover, which allows people to share images more easily on photocentric sites such as Pinterest and Tumblr or any network you have enabled. So, for example, here's a post that has the on media location enabled. And as I scroll down, I see this really beautiful image that I, that I want to share with my friends. I hover over it, and you get a list of your networks here. And if I were to click on Pinterest, then I could um, share it on that network. OK, so to enable this location, first going to want to go to your Monarch Settings page under Tools, Monarch Settings. And the first um, tab you're going to be greeted with is your Locations tab, where you can uh, manage the various social, social sharing locations that Monarch comes with. And in our case, we're going to want to enable the media location. You can see the green check mark there, which means you have media enabled. And next, you're going to want to go to the On Media tab here to adjust the settings for that location. We have various settings here. Um, icon styles, which affects the hover animation. You can change the shape. You have various display settings, color settings, and you can also enable and disable um, media sharing on the post types that media sharing supports. So let's play with some of these options um, to get an idea of what they do. First up is the icon style, which is the hover style, and you can preview those hover styles right here in the dashboard and find one that you like. So I'm just going to go with a simple style here on the right, and then you can choose your icon shape, whether it be square or rectangle, rounded rectangle, or circle. Let's try changing to circle to see what that looks like. I'm going to save and go back to our post here, refresh, and you can see all these icons have changed to circles, and the hover animation is now just a simple dark and on hover. Going back to the settings, I'm going to switch back to our rounded rectangle and move on to the display settings. The first up is the column settings. Now, by default, it's set to auto width, which means that these buttons will only ever be as big as is required by the content within them. So these buttons will grow bigger when you add more information to them, such as share counts and uh, network names. So for example, let's try adding share counts and saving. Refresh. So these buttons have gotten a little bit bigger just um, so they can contain the content within them, right? And they're all floated in a line, and they're going to break to the next line once they reach the edge. But if you want to adjust those columns to, be, to adhere to a more strict grid, you can do that by choosing the amount of columns you want to display. For example, we have eight networks enabled. If I wanted to have two rows of four, and for to always have two rows of four, I could change to four columns and save, refresh, and there we have this, um, this strict column grid. So you can choose whatever um, you think looks best. I think that in general, when you have network names and counts enabled, the, the strict grid tends to look pretty good. But if you only have the icon enabled, then having it um, be auto width and having the smaller icons tends to look pretty nice. Next up is the share counts, which actually I just enabled. So when you um, enable share counts, you're going to get a, a, um, a total count for each, each network that represents how many times that page has been shared on that network. So you can see here. We can see how many times this page has been shared. Um, hasn't been shared much at all. This is my local host, host installation. Has been shared once on Pinterest. And that's all. Now, when you click that social share counts and enable them, you're going to get a minimum count display option. This is a threshold that those counts have to reach in order to be displayed, which can um, prevent a bunch of zeros and ones and low numbers from being displayed if you wish to hide those numbers and not divulge the fact that your page has never been shared. So for example, if I wanted to set this to 30, what that would do is, even though I have display share counts enabled, those share counts would actually never display a number until the share count was more than 30. So let's say Facebook has 30 shares, and the rest of my networks have zero shares. Instead of displaying share counts in every single button, which would be 30, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, it would instead just have 30 for Facebook, and the rest would remain blank, um, which I think is a better result than having a bunch of zeros on your page. So you can play with that setting um, depending on you know how new your blog is, how many shares you're getting, and what you think um, looks the best. 
and encourages the most shares from uh, your readers. Next up is the total shares option. This will tally up all the shares you have on your post and add a total shares count above your buttons. So if you enable this, um, you're going to get a total shares count tallied up and added above the buttons. And then you can change the text color of that since it's actually living outside of the buttons. It then is affected by the background color of your image. In most cases, images tend to be dark, so I think a white color will look good, but it really depends on your situation. So refresh this. Now I have the total share counts here tallied up on the top. I only have one share, so it says one. But in your case, you're probably going to have more than one share, and it's going to tally up that number. Next, next up is the option to display network names. So if you enable this, it's going to say um, the network name next to the icon. So te te uh, typically, <coughs> if you have a bunch of inf information like this being displayed, you have your network name, you have your icon, you have your share counts. Um, that's when you want to start playing with your column width to get the best result. So the more information you have, um, you probably want to have a bigger column grid or set it to auto width. So I'm going to set it to three columns and save and refresh. You can see now we have a three column grid. We have the network name, the icon, and the count being displayed. And it all fits nicely. If you were to try to squeeze all the information into like a five column grid, then it's all going to get a bit squished. So you want to you know, play with the, those column settings depending on how much information you're displaying. Next up is the remove icon spacing option. This is going to remove all the spacing in between all the icons here, which is a cool effect um, if that's what you're going for. So to give you an example, I'm going to click the remove spacing option and refresh. I change it to a four column grid with no spacing and all the buttons are pressed up against each other. Um, yeah, it's a really nice effect if that's what you're going for. Again, it's really up, for you, up to you um, to choose a style that works best for your blog. Finally, we have the hide on mobile devices option. Um, this is if you think you have so, many, so much um, sharing locations enabled and you think it's getting a little bit overwhelming for mobile and you only want to display one, then um, you can disable it. Typically, I think the social sidebar is the best mobile option and the, the rest can usually be disabled. Um, when you have that enabled, but it's really up to you. So I would hide this on mobile devices. Next up is your color settings, which you can use to adjust the colors of the buttons. By default, they adhere to the color of the network itself. Um, Facebook would be, be a dark blue, Twitter would be a light blue, Google Plus, their signature red, and so on. But if you don't like that rainbow effect, you want to have a, you know, a simpler color scheme that matches your design, then you can enable custom colors and begin adjusting them you can adjust the background color, the hover background color, the icon color, and the hover icon color. So for example, if I want to change this to red and change the hover to orange, hit save. Um, there you go. They've all been changed to this red, and the hover's been changed to orange. In addition, you can adjust the um, text color on hover as well um, with those other two options here. Finally is the post type settings, where you can decide where um, media sharing is displayed by default. So media sharing, unlike the rest of the locations, has only supports certain post types. In this case, since it's the default WordPress installation, it has posts and pages. We only have it enabled for posts since um, it can get a bit overwhelming to automatically enable it on all the images on your pages. And so we have the post setting checked here. But on the other hand, if you don't want to have media sharing automatically enabled in every single image on every single post in your blog, then you can go ahead and uncheck this. This means that even though the location is enabled, we're not actually going to automatically add it to every single image on your blog. Instead, you can use the Monarch custom override settings, the meta box, to individually enable media sharing on individual posts. If for whatever reason you think certain posts have very shareable photos, um, then you can do that. Or on the <coughs> using the same logic, you can automatically enable it on all posts and then use those custom override settings to disable it on certain posts that you think you know, might have small images or images that just don't make sense for sharing, and so on. And finally, you can also use the 
on media shortcode to just target certain images for sharing. And if you want to learn more about the on media shortcode, then check out that tutorial. I'm not going to go into detail about that here. And that's a basic overview of how to use the on media sharing feature in Monarch.